Hey guys, it's me, Carol, with Refunction Crafts, and I'm here to bring you another video today. Um, <clears throat> this is going to be the um, 4,000 subscriber giveaway video. So um, the item that I'm going to be making in this video today is what I will be giving away, and I hope you guys like it. Um, I know that I'm going to like it because I've already made a few of these and um, this one particularly I think is going to be really really pretty. Um, I'm going to be making a couple of them. One will go into my Etsy shop and the other will be my giveaway um, gift. So I'm going to go ahead and get right on it. I'm going to be using one of these little mint tins. It's about the size of like an Altoid tin, but the cool thing about these tins, as you can see, it sort of almost has a mirror on the inside of it in the lid. Um, so I think it's pretty cool. And these are just little sweet, sweetheart peppermint tins. And these come, I think you can find these at a lot of different places. Uh, my friend Barbara sent these to me and um, I love, these are all actually a little smaller than an Altoids tin. <clears throat> and I love them because they're perfect as um, business card holders. And that's what I use mine for. Um, but um, they're also perfect for, you know, little bits of, you know, whatever you want to put inside. Maybe, uh, I don't know what kind of makeup items you could fit in there because it's pretty thin. Um, but that's part of what I like about it is because it's not as tall as the Altoid tins and not as bulky. But these mint tins come normally with uh, really pretty sayings on the insides of them, um, prayers and things like that. They are um, just super cool to use. And so, um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get started on this. This is the tin I'm going to be using. This is one that I have already sanded down and painted white. Um, I... I relieve myself of the duty of painting something in my videos most of the time anymore because y'all know how to paint. Um, that's not difficult, but um, it's a step that I don't, I don't like to have to do if I, if I really don't need to. So anyway, I have already painted this one white, and when I paint my, my tins, I paint them, I close the tin, and I paint it all the way around so that where this portion opens and closes, I leave it as it was before I got it. Um, that way I don't have a bunch of scuffing and scratching right up under that area. Um, and it doesn't get messed up. So anyway, this one's already painted. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be Mod Podging it with um, this napkin. And... Um, I think I might be putting a couple more of these napkins in my shop. I did have some in my shop, but they were sold right away. So um, they're super, super pretty. These are ones that I got a while back, and I've not seen them again. So um, I'll see how many I have and, and go from there. I don't want to give them all the way, but I will probably put some in my shop um, in case somebody else wants to try them out. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get started. The other thing that you're going to need is some Mod Podge um, and then uh, obviously a paintbrush and these are some embellishments and things that I may or may not be using. I wanted to show you guys these rhinestone uh these are flat back rhinestones that i just got in the mail it was a happy mail gift from my friend kim and look at how shiny these are they don't have anything on the back of them they're actually these are not flat backs these are cone shaped on the bottoms but the tops you know have that little flat section and they're super duper shiny so i'm probably going to place a few of these around on this uh, not probably i know i am um, because they're just so, so, so pretty. Um, but anyway, thank you, Kim. I really appreciate that, and I really love these. 
I'm also going to be using some of this um, rhinestone chain that I also got from Kim and um, we'll be using that around the outside of the tin and some of these other items I got this beautiful peacock from my friend Debbie over at Kiki's Sale I don't think she has any more of these I'm not sure but she often gets different kinds of peacocks and different different blingy pieces that I really really enjoy using she also sent me some of these little um, I think they were earrings at one time or something yeah um, that she sent me so these I'm going to be using some of those couple of, of pearl uh, stamen pieces that I'm going to be using and some some flowers and things like that but we'll, we won't go too far into all that stuff you'll see as I use them I've also got a couple of um, little angels I'm going to probably choose one of these to put on the tin as well these I also get from Debbie over at Kiki Sale and she does sell these uh, when she does her sales every other week um, so if you're interested in being a part of that group, um, you do have to join the group, but you don't have to purchase, you know, every time she has a sale. Um, but um, it's a fun group, really great group of, of uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, everybody just kind of shares some of their projects and things like that as well. She also has a... Um, a trading group where they trade craft supplies and that's another fun group to be a part of because if you have things that you don't need or you're not using anymore and somebody else has something that you maybe want to start getting into um, it works out nicely because you can just trade supplies hold on just a second guys I'm gonna get my other little scissors really fast because I forgot to grab them And I can't, can't do anything without these little scissors. <laughs> so I have my big ones that I use for all of my fabrics and my laces and stuff. But these are good for little things. And I just noticed there's a little string on this little flower here that I wanted to cut off. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and just dive right into this. I'm going to go ahead and dip my brush into the Mod Podge. Oh, whoopsies. It helps to have your napkin ready. I've already torn this one off um, or I've taken the, the extra layers off I should say and now I'm just going to kind of tear around the image so that I can use the portion of this that I want to use just like that and again I don't cut around mine, I tear them because that is my preference. Um, I know I've been getting some, some tips from some of y'all that, um, that also do some Mod Podging and um, they've been really, really helpful. Um, some of them I'll use, some of them I won't and some of them I know are good tips that I could probably use but I choose to do my pod podging in the way that I've kind of always done it. It works for me. And so um, I just kind of continue to do mine the way I'm comfortable. So, But I do appreciate all of your comments and your suggestions because some of them I do take um, uh, and, and use them. And they become my new way of doing things. So... <laughs> So please keep them coming. I really appreciate all of your your tips and tricks because maybe sometimes what I do is not the way that someone else would do it or maybe you've seen someone else do something that is a whole lot easier than the way I'm doing it. And I do appreciate those kinds of, of tips because it helps me to do a better job on the you know projects that I'm working on. And I'm just going to kind of lay this down and sort of smooth it over. And I think I actually ended up getting out most of the uh, wrinkles in this one. 
except right there where I tore it. And you guys, you know, when you're doing Mod Podging, you're probably going to tear some things now and then. Don't worry too much about that. Don't, don't let it ruin your day because ultimately you can fix those little tears and things. You can, you can adjust and, um, you know, get that, that napkin down. See how I've torn that right there? And I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to finish laying that down there. And if I have to, I can take um, a bit from another area of the napkin and just put it over the top and finish it off. And it looks um, perfect. So um, there are areas you can see with this napkin because of the area that I tore out that um, are empty. So you can see there are spots here, here, and over here that that don't have anything on them. And I can either leave them like that, which is okay too, or I can take a little bit of this napkin here and just kind of tear some of these flowers out and place them. Like here, I've got some more purple flowers. I'm just going to take and kind of spread the purple flowers up into this corner. And voila! It looks beautiful. Okay. I think there are there are people that use, uh, someone had given me a tip of using um, cellophane uh, when you do Mod Podging. I have never seen anybody do that and so I have not done it. Um, that's not to say it's not a better way of doing it. I just have not done it. I haven't tried it and I haven't seen a video where they've done that. Um, but I guess uh, one of the ladies that watched one of my videos had indicated that a lot of people do it that way um, and there was a lot of YouTube videos. So I guess I need to get out there and really find those. I'm gonna go ahead and dry this with my little dryer and then also I am um, I have another one that I've already done that is the one I think I'm going to go ahead and do for you guys today but if you want to work quickly you can take your little heat gun and just dry it and then continue on this one what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it aside because like I said, I have another one here that I've already completed. And what I did was I Mod Podged the top and the bottom. Because I thought, you know, it might be nice to... I, I oftentimes don't think to do that. But it finishes it off, number one. And number two, if you Mod Podge the bottom as well, you're going to have less chance of getting scuffs and nicks in the paint. Um, because this is a tin, it's, it's paint on metal it will tend to chip, uh, the paint will tend to chip sometimes, and uh, we really kind of don't want that. And then these are just some little white flowers that I stuck in there so I could remember to, to use them today. I had to, while I was watching TV last night, I took the, the leaves off of the backs of these um, and took the stems out and all that so that they would be ready to, to use. But these are some flowers that I get... Um, I actually got from uh, from Debbie over at Kiki's Sale, and I got two nice sized packages of them. Oh, they're behind me here. I think. Oh goodness! But Debbie sells these flowers in um, Kiki's Sale. But they. They come like this when she purchases them, and then she sells them in bundles of, you know, how they're they're bundled up together in the package. So she does sell these little white flowers, and then other colors and things too. Different sizes. Let me show you some of the ones that I have gotten 
from Debbie and different colors, different sizes, uh, pinks, blues, purples, you name it. Um, she gets them and they are absolutely gorgeous. I love working with them. I have a little bag that's kind of full of my flowers that I use. And I'll be using some different ones too. I just took a few of them out. But um, <clears throat> this, I'll just really quick show you. This is my business card for my Etsy shop. And these business cards fit perfectly on the inside of these tins. And I love that. So I do have a little bit of paint on the inside of this that's kind of gotten up under the rim. But you can take this and clean it up after you're done. And just the, the paint will easily, um, if you haven't gone over it with anything, it will easily come off. And you can clean up the edges and so forth. So anyway, so that's how it works as a business card holder. So you can see that it's a perfect size for business cards. Um, so now we're going to just start embellishing this. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this beautiful, this is a four millimeter rhinestone chain. And maybe what I need to do is I probably need to get a little closer up on the project here and make sure that I'm doing it in front of you and not away from you. There we go. So that you guys can see. So the one thing that you always want to make sure that you're doing is when you're decorating these, depending on if you're going to have it so that you're opening it this way or if you're opening it sideways, that you have it going in the right direction. Because you would want to open it like a book if you're going sideways or with the opening towards you, you know, obviously. I have done some of these where I've decorated the entire thing and realized at the end I decorated it upside down. So be very, very mindful of that when you're um, embellishing something like this. So I have a whole bunch of things that I'm going to be doing, so let's just get started. You're going to want some E6000 because as far as adhesives go, it works best for holding, I have found, for holding rhinestones and things on to my projects. And this one I've got to unplug because um, the lid is a little bit plugged up. So I'm just going to try and get a thin layer of this E6000 and go around the entire top portion. And again, be mindful that you're at the top and not the bottom. And I'm just going around the very top edge here, not at the lip. Um, I'm, I'm doing this around the top edge and just going around the entire tin. And then we will lay the rhinestone chain around. And again, this rhinestone chain I did get um, as a gift, a happy mail gift from a friend. Um, again, my friend Kim sent it to me. And, um, but you can get it on Amazon. And I will uh, try to remember to put a link up uh, to show you what I normally would use uh, and purchase from Amazon to do my projects. Now you can see as I'm doing this I'm laying the rhinestones so that the stones face upwards and I want to try and work quickly to get this around the edge and then I can adjust once I get it all on there. Um, but making sure that my rhinestones are not turning outward because if you do let them turn outward it's going to change literally the placement of your rhinestones and if you cut it off you may cut it off too short because if you're if you're facing the rhinestones up you're going to need slightly more chain than if you had it pointing outward on the sides and as far as I'm concerned when you point them outward they just don't it doesn't give the same effect because when you're embellishing a project, you want to, whoever, who, who, whoever has this piece, you want them to be looking at 
those pretty embellishments. And if they're off to the side, they're going to be looking at the side of the rhinestone chain. And that's not, not what you want. And so I am going to take this, get my little nippers here, and cut this off at this last rhinestone that I need here. And I'm just going to lay those down. And then I'm just going to kind of pick it up and I'm going to go around the edge and straighten these out. A good thing to use is a toothpick or like I have this little uh, file. And because it's straight, I can kind of set it under those rhinestones and push them against it so that I get a much straighter line going across the edge of this. And I like to try and get them as straight as I can and then I'm pushing them up against the tin as I go to kind of um, squeeze them into that adhesive and that's going to make them stick better and hold better and the E6000 is a wonderful adhesive that does not easily break loose so that's why I use it on most of my projects like this where I'm using a uh, rhinestone chain or other um, uh, smooth surface embellishments because hot glue, it's going to stick for the moment, but it's not going to stay. So you need to make sure you're using something that is going to stay. So there it is with just the rhinestones on it. And look at how pretty that looks, even just with only the rhinestones. Okay, so those are on there, and they're, they're pretty good. You want to be careful if you're going to continue working at this point um, because it's not, it's not um, cured yet. It's not completely stuck so you can easily move those around as you're working on your project if you're not careful. If you want to make sure that they're stuck down, give yourself at least an hour for those to um, really stick down good and then start working on the rest of your project. Um, so anyway, I have this peacock that I got from Kiki Sale. I'm going to use this peacock on this piece just because I'm absolutely in love with it and honestly I hate to part with it but um, I wanted to do something special for this giveaway and so this is the piece that I chose to do and um, I'm just going to I think I'm going to, well, I, I say I'm going to use it. I always say I'm going to use a piece and then I end up changing my mind halfway through because it's too big or what have you. Um, now these other pieces that are on this peacock, this may be difficult for me to do. I'm going to move off camera to try and snip this um, and get these other big pieces off of the bottom. Okay. Oh, there's one more piece. So this was actually a brooch. Um, brooch slash necklace. You could use it for either one. It had the loop at the top to do a necklace and then it had the brooch clip on it. Um, so it could have been used for either thing. But that's what I, the kind of jewelry that I use for my um, pieces. So the next thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to, I'm trying to see if I want to use a small piece of some kind of lace or something. The problem with that is I really don't want to cover up these flowers and things that are on this box because they really are pretty. Um, and so I don't want to um, ruin that effect. Uh, so I'm thinking I may just um, I may just not oh you know what I do have some though that is not going to matter I did get some of these um, 
appliques from Kiki Sale. They've got little pearls and sequins on them. And I am going to use a small piece of this, I think, because it's it's dainty enough that I kind of feel like it kind of adds that, um, well, that lacy effect. I'm only going to cut up one of these because Debbie did send me some. I'm making... Um, bridal masks and I will show you guys a couple of those that I've done already I made um, a bride and groom mask for my son and my new daughter-in-law who got married on Thursday I know Thursday is an odd day to get married but they did uh, they got married through the courts because they are in their later 30s and want to start having children and they don't know how long this whole coronavirus thing is going to go so they just decided they want to get married and start working on um, having a family so um, they got married on Thursday and um, I was their witness which was very exciting for me um, because um, well <laughs> because it was my son at number one and just the fact that they chose me to be their witness was the biggest honor of my life I think so anyway um, I I was over the moon when they asked me and I I just couldn't believe that um, that I was their choice so made me very very happy okay so I'm just gonna try and see here how I want to um, place everything like I said I don't want to get all of these flowers all covered up <clears throat> because they really are pretty I don't mind so much covering up this yellow section so I think that's kind of where I'm going with this is that I'm just gonna I'm gonna put a few here take this little tiny one Right there and um, also I have these bits that I've cut from my little these are little embroidered flowers that I cut out of an old shower curtain that I think I'm gonna put a couple of those in there I just kind of took some of those out that I already had cut and we'll just kind of add them like that so I'm just gonna I think I kind of know what I want to do and everything won't end up in the exact same spot, but um, it'll all work out in the end. And we will get started on gluing this all on top. Okay, so let's start gluing these embellishments on here. Um, I'm going to place one of these flowers in the center of this piece of the applique that I'm going to be using because you can see where it takes it from being very plain to being really um, more it, it has more pop so um, I've just placed one of those on there and we're going to place that down first that applique so I'm just going to take a little bit of my hot glue we'll just get that portion of it for now and we'll start gluing that down and then I'm going to take a little bit on this edge Oops, sorry I had my little angel on there I think I may have changed my mind I think I may use this little angel instead of the peacock because I think it would be very pretty on there and I added a little rhinestone in her hand uh, one of my little uh, pretty clear rhinestones so I think that's what I'm going to do I'll, we'll, we'll kind of play around with it first and see for sure if that's what I want to do maybe I'll test both of them out I also may use this pretty um, floral piece that I also got from Kiki Sale so um, let's see I thought about putting one of these leaves on there, but I think they're just too big. 
and I don't like the size. However, I do have some of these tiny green leaves that I think I'm going to cut off of here in case I decide to use them. I'm, I'm pretty sure I will use a few of these green leaves that I have here. I have some other ones, but I'm going to use these up for right now. And they're just kind of silky and soft, and they lay flat, and so I thought, well, I'll just use these. And these were just part of some ribbon. Um, I think somebody may have sent, somebody sent these to me, but I also have a little shop nearby that I found that has some similar ones. I don't know that they're as pretty, I don't know, they might be exactly the same, I'm not sure. I don't have them in front of me, so I'm not positive, but I'm going to probably use some of those little leaves as well. In fact, I may have a couple of them coming out of that um, to dress up that piece of lace even further. And we'll just take them maybe like in twos. Stick it up under the pearls there. And that looks really pretty. I think I'm just going to put those two right there. Um, okay, so now let's get started on some of these other embellishments here and see where we want to go. I know I already kind of tested this all out and then I found this, but the only problem with this one is that it's hard and it's, it's thick and it may sit up too high if somebody was to want to use this as a business card holder. It may be too too bulky. Now, we've also got this paper rose, but it's not um, maybe a little bit big. Maybe I'll even break it down a little bit and take this bottom layer off and see if we can't make this a little smaller because I want I would like to put some purple and some pink flowers into this and these are the prettiest purple ones that I have so I'll just take that bottom section off and cut off this wire here at the bottom and then I think I'm also going to take my big scissors here and try and cut off a, nip off a bit of the bottom there so that it doesn't sit quite as high. Get a couple more of these petals off and I think that way I've got a smaller sort of a bud piece instead of such a big, big, big flower. Um, okay, so let's get started here. Uh, let's not waste any more time. <laughs> Um, okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to start gluing these little roses down and commit. I'm going to put a little white one back behind there. And we're going to go... I want to put lots of colors and we want to kind of spread the color around. Most of these little white ones, I took the green leaves off the back because I don't know if you can see it here, but the green on those is so bright. Um, I don't, I, I don't want it to be that bright. I want it to be more uh, muted. And so the only way to do that is to cut those, um, the back pieces off of them. So that's why I did that. I, I don't care too much for the really bright green, but we can always fix that. That's not something that bothers me at all. Um, you don't see that part much anyway. So for me, it's just, it's fine. And then I've got this one. And I think I'm going to put this one, let's see. I don't want to go overboard with these. I don't think I'm going to use that. I was thinking about using that in there, but I don't think I'm going to. 
because it feels like it doesn't really go with the piece. I'll put this one here. And I think I'm going to put this one here. And again, I'm leaving the green on this one because it's a nice dark, deep green. And I do like that. And then I'm going to put a couple of leaves coming off of this flower. And we're just putting a little dot and laying it, sort of tucking it under that flower there. And then I'm going to put a little white flower here somewhere. A little tiny white one. I think I'm going to wait on that one because it's so tiny I want to make sure I put it in just the right spot. And then I have this little bitty embroidered flower that I'm going to stick on there. And let's see. Boy, I don't want to go overboard, but I want to enjoy all of these colors in here. Okay, uh, let's see. It needs more purple. I just feel that it needs more purple. I'm wondering if maybe if I could take and maybe glue a couple of these petals together that I took off of the other purple flower and see if maybe I can make something of this <laughs> and make another small flower. And we're just gonna put some glue there, put them around. And I have a little flower there, and then I think I'll take a couple more of these petals off of the, the bottom piece here. And maybe kind of float them in there somewhere too, so that it has more a little more fluff. And we'll just put them in between those other petals. And one or two more. just cut this one down a little bit and we'll put this one right here and I'm sorry you guys if I'm not close enough I didn't realize I didn't zoom in my lens I had to turn my camera off at one point um, because why did I do that? There was something that I had to I had to do. Oh, I didn't plug in my glue gun. And so I had to do that. Okay, that's where we're going to use this little tiny flower. We're going to use that as the center point of this other purple rose here. And look how pretty that looks. So now we will place that one here. I'm just going to put plenty of glue on the back of that and press it in. And then if I press it in, it kind of fluffs up the edges of that flower as well. So um, I have a couple of these little buttery... Well, they're white flowers with like a buttery yellow center in them that will actually look pretty to accent the little bit of yellow that's in that napkin that I used to Mod Podge it with. And we're going to put one over here. Just put a little bit of hot glue. Push that baby in there. And I think that's as far as we're going to go with the flowers on this. Now what I want to do 
is I'm going to take my E6000 and I'm just going to dab a couple of dots in different places here where I want to put some of those little rhinestones. And I don't want to put too many dots because knowing me, I'll forget where I put them. And then they won't, um, I, I'll have glue spots there where I don't want them. So these I'm just going to put a few like right in that area there. Trying to make sure that I have them turned the right way. <laughs> um, I put some there. And I'll put one there. And over. And I know some of you are probably yelling, going, over there, Carol, over there. <laughs> Don't miss that spot. <laughs> I would be. <laughs> okay, so we've got some there. And then I want to come around this side and put some over here. I'm going to put a couple right there. Maybe one right there and one right there. So we'll do that. There. We'll put another one there. And one. Where did I put it? I don't know. I don't remember where I put my glue. At least with these uh, rhinestone pickers, I, I know that some of you are, have seen my video. I do have a video out there on how to make these little rhinestone pickers yourself. No need to buy expensive ones. You can make these so easy with toothpicks and candle wax. So um, check out my video. I'll try and remember to put the link up for my video on how to make these. Um, because it's super easy and kind of fun and relaxing to do. Um, I'm going to need a few more of my little rhinestones. So I'm just going to take a few more out and lay them out. And where did I see my glue? Right there. I'm going to put two of them there. And these are AB rhinestones, Aurora Borealis. I said that right the first time. Um, super duper pretty. I mean, Kim, I can't tell you how gorgeous these look. I'm putting another leaf in there because the other one just wasn't, the other ones weren't showing very well. And then I think I'm going to put one leaf back here. Kind of hanging off the edge here. All right, so we've got those on there, and now I've got my little angel, and I think I want to just kind of have her sort of sitting in there with the flowers, amongst the flowers, because if I put her over here, she just kind of seems to get a little bit lost, so I think I'm going to put her here. I did cover up that one very beautiful flower there, but that's okay. Um, I'm gonna, we're going to put this little angel gal right here, and I am going to put some hot glue, and I should have done this in the reverse order, but I didn't, so I need to work fast. Some hot glue and some E6000 on her. The E6000 is going to assure me that she's going to stay on there and not go anywhere because, again, she's got a slick surface. And I don't want her to come off easily, so... There we go. All right. And then the other thing that I'm going to put in here, there's a couple more things, actually. Um, let's see. Do I want to? No, I'm not going to use that. Um, I wanted to use a couple of these little stamens. And what I want to do is I want to cut them down because I don't really have anywhere to tuck them too deeply. 
but I do want to have these kind of sticking out in a couple of places. So I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue in there and I'm just going to poke these guys in there and I like to um, stagger them so that they're not this, both the same length. So those will come out right there and then maybe have a couple coming out over on this side and I have one more that I took out here to cut. So I'm just going to pop some glue in there and trying not to cover up my little uh, embroidered flower too much. I'll pop those two stamens just kind of coming off to the side. And it kind of evens things out a little bit. And then I have these pretty pieces that I also want to pop in there somewhere. So um, this one I knocked off one of my pretty rhinestones. Okay, so this one, let's see. I think we're going to put one there. And I'm going to press that down pretty good because I want it to I want it to lay as flat as I can uh, get it to lay and then this one I think I'm gonna pop maybe inside these in between these flowers here in there. So we're going to tuck this one right in here, put enough glue in there that it's going to stay, and I want to press it down so that it doesn't sit awkwardly when you're looking from the front view of this piece. And this is a great little piece you could put by your bedside, you could put your pills in it, um, that you take at night, um, you know, so that you, you have them right there next to you all the time, um, or, you know, something to that effect. The other thing, the last thing that I'm going to do with this, and um, you guys know it's kind of my signature move, and um, my favorite thing to use, I'm going to put a little bit of uh, diamond dust on this, in a couple of spots and all I'm doing is I'm squeezing some triple thick over the outside. I'm going to kind of move that in with my fingers here or maybe use a toothpick because in these roses I kind of need to get it down in there a little bit and I don't want to use a brush so I'm going the easy way today. And then here I'm just going to take my fingers and I'm just going to kind of smooth that out. And this kind of smooths the top surface of this piece as well. Um, and the reason, a lot of times you'll see me, I will use um, glossy accents instead of triple thick. Um, and the reason that I do that is sometimes with um, when you're using images on top of a piece, especially if you print those images on an inkjet printer, not a laser jet, but an inkjet, um, the color, the ink that those inkjets use is not the same as the toner that you get out of a 
laser jet printer and so the colors if you print an image and you try to use it on something like this and then you put triple thick on it the image completely fades out it, it fades to a very not attractive um, look and it ruins your piece and I learned that a while back I used to use triple thick for everything and then I learned that because I was printing at first I had a laser jet printer and so it wasn't affecting me and then when I got my inkjet I realized hey something's changed here well I thought honestly that it was the um, the triple thick that had changed I thought maybe they had somehow changed the formula or something and now it was not doing things the way it should and it was it was getting frustrating because every project I was doing was not coming out the way I wanted it to and they were looking all faded and and you know I I strive to make my things look a certain way and have a certain quality and I was just wasn't feeling it <laughs> um, but then I figured out it wasn't the triple thick's fault it was the inkjet printer so that makes a difference so if you can print your images on a laser jet you're gonna be way better off they're gonna hold up better and they're going you can use triple thick over the top of them and then napkins um, because of the way that they're made the triple thick does not affect them so um, just so that you know if you're using napkins you're okay to use the triple thick uh, but if you're using uh, inkjet printed uh, images not so much you're gonna be disappointed because as that triple stick triple thick starts to dry your image is going to fade and fade and fade until it just gets to where you just can't hardly even see it um, in your project. So um, it's a thing. And so just remember that um, I do have this one more flower that I didn't get any triple thick on that I must get a little bit of diamond dust on because it's my signature thing. I should I should own stock in diamond dust in this uh, Floracraft diamond dust because I use it so much and it's the one thing that in my crafting I can't live without. <laughs> that and rhinestones. <laughs> so um, yeah, just my thing. I like sparkle. I'm a sparkly kind of a girl. And there we go. We have it. It is completed, sparkling like crazy, and gorgeous. And I'm what I do after I put the diamond dust on. And what you might want to do is take a, a popsicle stick or a tongue depressor. I've got one here. I use my fingers a lot of times, but it's best to use something like this tongue depressor and just gently tap down that diamond dust and that way you don't have the little shards poking up because that is glass um, remember that it is glass and uh, don't work with diamond dust around children that is my big my big thing uh, that I, I tell everybody please don't use this around kids and don't let them use this in their projects because it's not something that they should be playing with so there we go all tapped down all sparkly and this is our giveaway project for today and i hope you guys really really like it um and then i also wanted to show you i gave my daughter-in-law two of my bridal masks because when i made the first one i wasn't sure if it was going to fit her right i thought it was going to be too big and um so I had made her a second one as well. This one I'm not quite through with it because I'm going to take some of this rhinestone chain that I got um, from Kim and I am going to add that across the top piece of this. But let me 
just zoom out a little bit here. So this is one of them that I've made. This is a bridal one. And then I'll put up a couple of pictures also of the one that I did for my son because I'm doing the bridal masks and then I'm doing the tuxedos. The, the little... I'll put pictures up. I have pictures of his. I gave it to him already. But um, here's another one. This one has some pinks in it. Super duper pretty. I just love the way these are turning out. I'm going to be selling them in my Etsy shop. And look at this one, you guys. Oh my gosh. This one's more for maybe your vintage style wedding. And I used a few of the, a couple of these um, pretty uh, embroidered flowers on it. And then this has just a little slight bit of a beigey color and an ivory trim. And then the, the base is white. But it's got the ivory trim and the pretty pearls and everything around it. I'm having so much fun making these. These masks will be in my store. Um, I just, I've been waiting to try and make a few of the tuxedo masks. Um, and I do have some people that have um, asked if they could order some. And so um, that's kind of the other thing. I need to, to fill some orders as well. So, um, that's it you guys for this project I hope you enjoyed it and um, here's what we're gonna do now I'm gonna explain the giveaway um, the part you've been waiting for what I need you to do this is going to be what I am giving away this box right here and um, what I need you to do is I need you to like and subscribe to this video and make a comment down below. Now the comment part is very, very important because what I do when I um, select my, my winners is I use a random comment picker and it's set up through YouTube and it chooses a random winner based on comments. And if you think that you can make five comments and have five chances, you're wrong. So just make one comment because the program will actually pick out only one comment from each person. So if there are duplicates um, from from multiple multiple comments from one person, it will only pull one of those comments. So making extra comments is not going to give you a bigger chance to win. So um, don't waste your time on that. <laughs> um, I did have that happen a few times in the beginning where people were making lots of comments and I thought, oh my gosh, they're going to have extra chances. Well, it turns out that I found out that the program will not let them do that. It, I mean, you can make as many comments as you want, but you're still only going to get one chance to win. So, um, so anyway, I'll be picking a random winner and what I do is I um, choose that winner on camera um, I'm gonna do it in front of your eyes so that you can see that it's not someone that I picked out of a hat um, and um, the only the only thing is is that this giveaway will be US based and I'm sorry for that um, anybody who's who's out of the country um, I just, the, the cost of shipping is so high and right now I can't afford to um, be shipping all over the place. Um, so this will be a U.S. based giveaway. And um, so get in there, get your comments in, get your, your chances up there. And I look forward to picking a winner. I'm going to give a one week to everyone to make their comments and view this video and then um, at that time so probably next uh, Saturday I will um, it'll be Saturday or Sunday of next week I will um, choose my winner so be on the lookout for that but thanks so much you guys I appreciate you watching I appreciate your time and um, hope you all have a blessed weekend and take care of yourself be safe and we'll see you very soon. Bye-bye. I just decided real quick to show you guys um, a separate video. This is the one that I, the, the original um, piece that I did. I did add this other piece of lace. I just thought it kind of um, gave it a little more um, evenness. Uh, it felt a little lopsided to me, so I added this, just this, little piece of lace here and then I finished the other one 
and this is what the other one looks like and as you can see I did put this um, piece here on it and I also put this little perfume bottle embellishment on it and I thought that really made the piece look really really nice so um, those are the two that I came up with and let me just do that a little bit and you can see the sparkle on these is amazing and they both turned out really spectacular so this um, this one here is going to be my giveaway piece for the video just so that you all know and this one was just another one that I made this one will be going into my Etsy shop so anyway thanks a lot you guys I just wanted to show you these pieces real quick bye bye